Hi, I'm Rob Cosm. Welcome to my shop. In this video, we're going to cover making a wooden box. Now, the hardest part of that is the lid, and that's what I'm going to focus on. I've got a beautiful piece of walnut, but you can see the twist in that. Trying to make a lid of that would be a disaster. I'm going to show you my secret to doing it, so you'll be able to do it as well. I'm Rob Cosman, and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell, which will alert you whenever we release a new video. Anytime we use a new tool or technique, we'll leave a description down below so that make it easier for you to find. All right, let's get back to work. Hi, I've been woodworking for probably 50 years or more. I started when I was a young child. And making boxes has always been top of my list. I thoroughly love it gets you a chance to take a pretty small pretty piece of wood and really make a feature out of it. When I teach it, folks get really excited about building the box itself. You get to use them dovetails, which is an incredibly strong way to uh, build the actual box frame. You can get away with really thin sides because the dovetail will add so much strength. The problem area has always been in the lid. In fact, if you look at this one real closely, you can see that this solid bird's eye lid has shrunk that was flush at one point, now it's actually sucked in there, well, oh, maybe a 32nd of an inch. However, it has stayed flat, which is the real challenge. Now, here's an example of where you can use a solid lid, solid wood top, but it's sitting inside of a very stable frame. And in that circumstance, there's not an issue. But when you start using solid wood like this, you get much beyond three inches and you have to start dealing with cupping and twisting. And the problem with a twist is that you no longer get a nice fit when the lid is closed. Now I've got a way of dealing with that and that's what I'm gonna show you. It's involved uh, using a core. In this case, the core of this lid, which is white oak by the way, is MDF. And the reason I prefer MDF more so than plywood is it in thin sections, it tends to, tends to stay nice and flat where plywood doesn't. And I don't hide the fact that that's what I've done. So if you look at this closely, you'll see end grain. Well, that piece of MDF has been banded on four sides and then a thin layer of veneer top and bottom. And we're actually gonna cut our own veneer. I'm gonna share with you what Alan Peter shared with me, which was how do you take a pretty piece of wood and get the most mileage out of it? If we were to make it out of, a, if we were going to make that lid out of one solid piece, that one nice pretty piece of wood makes one lid. But if you take that same piece of wood and slice it multiple times, you can get a lot of boxes out of it, and you add the stability as well. So what we're going to do is walk through the process of pre prepping the MDF, getting the four uh, bands put on it, and then we're going to take this piece, process it down. I'm going to show you how to slice your own veneer, how to glue it on and how to end up with what should be a nice stable lid for your box. I want to get a lid about eight inches wide out of this. So I've got to look it over and see what we got for defects. So we want this section right here. And I don't know what's going on there, although it doesn't go all the way through. We have some bad checks out here. Now, because this is badly twisted, I want to cut, rip that on the bandsaw. You do that on the table saw and it's almost for sure going to bind on you. So let's, uh, I'm using a dry erase marker because it doesn't, it doesn't uh, go down deep into the wood. And I'm just making some rough marks that we can use on the bandsaw. This is really twisted. I'm going to surface that first before I take any more off. Oh, that thing is twisted. I'm going to see if I can use my scrub plane.
It's so bad, I'm almost undecided as to which part to tackle first. We might only be able to get veneer out of this. All right, take that over to the joiner and see what we can do. plane this so that I get an acceptable glue surface and this will be the side that gets glued to the MDF so I want to get rid of there's some there's some nicks in those knives you can see it right there I want to get rid of all of that I'm not going to go for a perfect surface because all I need is just a nice smooth flat surface that will lay well on the uh, on the MDF Okay, not the prettiest piece of wood I've ever seen, but it's good for this demonstration. So our next step with this, cut it down to, cut it down to close to the final size and then go over to the bandsaw and start ripping some veneer off. And it's a, it's a big cut, cutting through eight inches of, of walnut, it's a, it's a tough cut. Now I've got that set for Actually, it's less than the thickness of, of that square, so I'm going to move that over a little bit more. Take a little thicker piece. We can always plane off more from the outside. Now, no, a little bit too low. I'm just going to make a quick touch like that. And you can see that that's looking pretty parallel top to bottom. That's a thin piece, doesn't leave us a lot for air. See if we can do it. Don't push too fast. And I forgot to hook up the vacuum. I'll make sure I do that on the next one. So there's our slice, and that came out. It's already starting to twist, but that's all right. We'll pull that flat when we veneer it. But it's a nice uniform thickness. So that'll make a good top or bottom. Now we'll do this, and we've got to go through, or we've got to go back and make sure this is nice and flat and also smooth that up, same way we did the other one, so that that side is ready to glue once it's glued to the piece of MDF, it's nice and solid and we can go in and we can plane that. But to try to go in and plane, surface plane a piece like that before you glue it on is going to be almost impossible. So do it while it's still in this form. Okay, so there's our two pieces. And that should be just perfect. So what we'll do is we'll glue those on. That'll be the glue side, this'll be the glue side. Once it's glued, then we can go in and clean that up with the plane. And it'll make us a nice top. There's our core. I'm gonna use 3 /16. Now the nice thing is I had some leftover walnut that came from that same board so it's going to have the same color. So we'll glue these two pieces on like this and then flush them off here and here and then we'll glue these two pieces on. So not nearly as much on the side but in case I want to do a wood hinge on this I want to have plenty of material so that's why the back band and the front band are going to be a half by half and the outside the ends are only going to be 3 16 and I, re I prefer to cut these 
with a cross cut saw and my bench hook as opposed to running to the chop saw or the table saw. All right, so these have to be done first. Then once the glue's dry, we can push them off. Put that in the vise. Now, in addition to having a Gluing this to the edge of this piece of MDF, we're also going to have the veneer top and bottom supporting it. So there's no way this piece is ever going to come off. And then we'll just rub that in there and get it to get some initial tack. Make sure that it's hanging over on all four sides. Now when you do that, make sure you put some downward pressure, let the glue, let the glue disperse. Just go back and make sure that we've got an overhang. We're good. Flip that around, do the other side. All right, this has been on here for about a half an hour which is enough. So glad I found out, actually I knew about it, but it was uh, amazing Ahmed that convinced me to actually try it. And Jake, and such a time saver. Oh, it's huge. If you're not doing that, you need to start. All right, so when we do this first one, uh, got to hang, got to hang this part over the edge just so that this will lay as flat as possible. I realize it's still sticking up back there. And what I'm going to do, well, I've got the blade out fairly far. Before I adjust it and bring it back in, I'm going to get all four of these close. And then I don't have to change the setting on my blade four different times. A little bit of magic wax on there. I don't want to, I don't want to hit the MDF. You can feel with your fingers extremely closely. That's good. Flip that over. Now I've got some glue down in here that I need to get off. That's good. Remember, lots of weight on my right hand that keeps the plane registering on the MDF so that there's no way it's going to tip this way. Okay, so that's close enough that we should be able to just plane those. using my fingernail to make sure that that's not 
sticking up at all. I don't want to prevent that next piece from gluing, on, gluing against the MDF over the entire length of the board. Still can catch my fingernail there just a little bit. So. There, now I'll do the same thing with this one. I made those a little bit thicker this way than they are that way, so that when I put it on, I can make sure that I make sure that I have a little excess on both sides. So I can flush it up. Now I'm I'm going to uh, just take a quick pass on there, clean up those saw marks. Okay, that's good. If you haven't seen our video on edge banding plywood, we'll leave a link below. Uh, at the end of it, I did a test to show how strong a joint between solid wood and MDF is on the edge. And uh, you might be surprised. So we'll just give that a little rub. And that helps to get it nice and tacky. Line it up. We'll do the same thing with this one, out on the end first, pull it down firmly, make sure it's hanging over on both sides. Okay, so I always save my scraps of uh, MDF because they, they're uh, fantastic for certain tasks, uh, tasks, and one of them is making calls. So I've got a bunch of one inch stock, one inch MDF. So I need these calls to be, I'm gonna, I just want them to be just, just barely bigger. So that's 12 and 5 eighths. It's gonna be, yeah, I'm gonna go 12 and 5 eighths. 12 and 5 eighths by seven and seven eighths. I just need one on each side. That's the nice thing about using that one inch MDF. The, uh, it's thick enough that one slab on each side for something this big will work perfectly. Okay, that still needs some more time to dry before we flush off those bands. But now what we need to do, and we can use this as our pattern, we need to come in here and trim these. It's gonna be a lot easier if these are the same size, because then we can put them on and you can tell whether or not everything, anything has shifted. Um, let's look and see what we have to avoid for defects. We've got one here, and we've got a bit of a split there which would be nice to avoid if we can. I'm going to put my magnifiers on and have a closer look at that. Okay, so we've got a crack right there and it goes through on that side as well. Now, the good news is that when it's glued down, it should be okay because I can't avoid it. We'll make sure it's on the inside. Now this one has a little bit of a defect right there, but that's gonna be on the inside. 
and from this side it looks pretty clean. Again, we've got to avoid that. So these aren't going to be an exact mirror image because in order to have the plane side down, they're going to be opposite, but when you're opening it up the lid, who's going to sit there and compare sides? So what I'll do, and I, I prefer the look of this as to down here, so I'll put this on, come over here as close as I can, right up tight to that. Now, you should be able to see this red pen. Now this stuff is thick enough, we should be able to trim that on the uh, table saw. Okay, we got a defect right there we've got to avoid. Now I'm going to take this over with me just so we can have some weight down there a day down to hold that in place as we trim it. If you try to cut that on the crosscut sled with it sticking up in the air like that, you're going to get a real ragged edge on the bottom side. No bad splintering, so we're good there. Now I've got to turn that around. Actually, I'll just do it on this side. Let's go have a close look at this. I did not see that. Now that's going to be on the inside. So the fact that it's going to be glued all the way around means it's going to be well supported. Where it's not going to be supported is up here as that little feathered edge gets hand planed. And I don't know if there's anything we can do. Uh, maybe when we, when we glue it, when we put it on, we'll just bend that a little bit, put some glue in there, and then we'll have to put some tape over this so that it won't ad adhere to the call. But that might give us a little bit of uh, a little bit of extra. Strength to that piece. Okay, we got to wait for that those uh, bands to dry enough that we can flush them off and then we'll go ahead and glue this up. Now you're going to encounter a problem when you cut your own veneer, especially on a bandsaw, is that you're going to get variations in thickness. In fact, we checked this with the micrometer and it was out 30,000 in various places. Problem with that is, you put a rigid call like this and clamp it down, there's going to be areas where there's a lot of pressure, there's going to be areas where there isn't any pressure because this cannot give to fill it in. So when I first started doing this 100 years ago, you used to be able to get this cushion kitchen flooring and it was a pretty rigid foam underneath it that would really bounce back and it, um, it, it wouldn't stay compressed. And I would cut it up and I would lay it. So you'd have your call, 
have a piece of that foam, have your piece that you're veneering, another piece of the foam, and the other call. Then when you put pressure on the calls, that cushion would apply pressure, even the pressure out over the entire surface, and you'd have en enough pressure all the way around to get good glue contact. Well, can't get that stuff anymore. Now, this is uh, what I have on my floor just to walk on, and that's not bad, but it's not as strong as I would like. I don't know where you're gonna find stuff like this, but we're in an old bowling alley, and when we took this place over, they had this stuff installed uh, in where the pin set so that the balls would bounce around a lot. Candle pin bowling, which is the style of bowling they have here, you actually can use your dead wood as uh, to knock down other pins. So the more action of the balls and pins bouncing around, the better, the higher your score. Now this stuff measures, is that three quarter, Jake? Yeah, it is, three quarters of an inch in thickness. And it's really stiff, but uh, there's a little bit of give. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna cut up two of these, one on either side, and I think it'll do the trick. It's just the right, just the right lengths. Yeah, I'm gonna avoid those holes because I want to have good pressure everywhere. Uh, I think I can cut this on the bandsaw without it being a problem. Doesn't stink as bad as I expected. This is a, a good argument for for using a uh, a veneer press, a vacuum press. But on small stuff like that, or what we're doing, I like the uh, I was going to say hassle-free method of just using some calls, but we've long since passed the hassle mark. Okay, same as what we did on the edges. I'll keep this hanging over quite a bit just to keep the glue off my bench. Okay, now I got a little bit of glue on here that came from my fingers. So I'll just clean that off. Just using the chisel as a scraper. Okay, now we'll clean these ends up. Now we'll, in the final fit, we'll uh, perfect this, but for right now we just want them flush. You always want to go in, never out. That way you're not breaking out that 
outside bit. A lot of pressure on the forward side. And I think we're going to have to apply a lot of pressure in order to uh, compress that and have it do the job we want. Make sure there isn't any thing on there that's going to create uneven pressure. I got some glue or something on there. I think this is going to do a good job. Now I'm just doing a bit of a dry run. And I think the way we'll do this is we'll put these, we'll glue these on, we'll masking tape them all and on, you know, one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight spots to hold that in place so it doesn't shift. Now I'd like to use my big heavy C-clamps and I don't think we're going to be able to. In fact, I almost know we're not. That's too bad because they, these would provide more pressure than the others. Ah, just sixteenth of an inch too big. Well, we'll have to use this F clamps instead. Okay, got to make sure everything is ready. This is the one that we need to do a repair on. No, actually that's not the one. And make sure we get that right. Can't be that bad of a defect because I can't find it. Where is it, Jake? Right there. Oh, it is right there. What? Up there? Yeah. Okay, so we put some glue in that and put a piece of uh, packing tape over it and that'll keep the glue. Well, actually, you know what? We don't need to do that at all because it's going against that and it's not going to stick to it. Okay, there's my notch trowel for spreading the glue. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put it on this one and then I'm going to go in and do the little repair on here. In fact, I think I'll, maybe I'll do this first. So the idea is I'm just going to try to force some glue into there. Same thing on this side. Okay, you can see the glue squeezing out when we do that, so we know we've got some in there. Let's go. Can always put more on. It's a little awkward trying to get it off. Now I've got too much already. I typically only glue one side and I always want to make sure you have enough glue on the outside edge. You can, you can live with not having maybe enough in the middle, some in a few spots, but the outside edge will lift and you'll hate it. Okay, put 
this one on. Flip that around. Hold it in place. You gotta make sure you have everything you need. This isn't the time to realize that you forgot something in a different part of the shop or house. Doesn't hurt to have a checklist. Okay, I've got I've got ample glue on all the outside edges. I got enough in the middle. No, this way. Put that in place. Now, see if we can't tape that down. Keep it from moving. It's going to be tough because that stuff is so uh, twisted. I'm trying to pull that bottom piece up while I'm pushing down on the top. Now that has slid a little bit this way. There's not a lot I can do about it and I've got a little bit of excess there anyway, so I'm okay. Line that up. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four at first. And I'm gonna apply the pressure. Actually, I'm gonna reach in as far as I can with those clamps. Not a lot of pressure at first. That way we don't end up causing it to slide one way or the other. Then we'll go in from either side. So we're getting lots of clamping pressure in the middle, but that, that one inch MDF will, would spread that pressure for us anyway. Okay, now I'm gonna Put some. Remember, we've got to get that that foam to conform enough to the irregularities and the thickness of the M of the uh, veneer that it'll apply enough pressure to get some good gluing. Easier. I'm going to put it up on its side so the clamps or the uh, handles are over here. I'm going to go one on that edge.
Now, I'm gonna go two more and I'm gonna show you where I'll put them. I want some, I, uh, these, this clamp's in there quite a ways. So I'm gonna put one right out here to give that a little more clamping pressure right in the middle. In the middle of this edge, that is. Okay. Go through and check them all again to make sure everything's tight. I think that's going to do a great job on putting pressure everywhere. I see squeeze out in most places. We'll give that a half an hour or so to dry. And we'll come back and just flush it up, have a quick look, and hopefully this will be the solution you're looking for, for box lids that you want to stay nice and flat. I took off most of the clamps, but I wanted to save the last four for when we film. See what kind of a spring back there is on that rubber. The fact that the clamps are still tight is good. That's the problem with some of the other stuff you use. It squeezes and then it doesn't, it doesn't push back, so then you don't have any amount of pressure on your glue up. No hollow spots. Well, this is the one where we <laughs> didn't think it was gonna stick. This is that little repair job we did. Probably should have put a piece of tape on that. Now, um, we'll do, I'll trim one side and then we'll, I'll do, trim one side and one end and then we'll use the table saw to do the other two. Went on a little bit crooked, but we had some, we had some extra so it's not a big deal. And you could use a flush trim bit if you wanted to, but for the amount of time it would take to set it up, hand plane is just as fast or faster. A little more blade. Okay, I'm flush on that side, but I still have material on this side meaning the side closest to me. And the fact that we were able to take that or use wood from that same piece for the band is really gonna make a nice job of disguising or hiding that uh, glue joint. But as I said, I'm not trying to fool anybody. Now I'm gonna take those big hunks of glue off with a chisel. Aim your chisel to cut in, that way you don't end up breaking fiber off on the outside. We could have done that over there as well. I 
I'm just gonna take a small cut. That one stands up quite a bit. That one didn't. Okay, let's plane up this face. I can't remember which direction we have to plane, so we'll just try it and see. Start with a really light blade exposure. Now rather than gunk up the plane I'd like to get that masking tape off. Be careful not to dig in. high in the edges. You could always sand this if you wanted, but I think we can plane it. Now I'm working these outside edges because it's just a little bit higher than it is in the middle. And that would have been the result of when we cut it on the bandsaw. Still the case. And over here. not familiar with planing a wide surface you want to make overlapping passes anywhere from a quarter to a third of the width of the blade and then when you sharpen your blade if you treat the corners with a little feathering you can blend overlapping passes so that you don't have any what we call plane tracks. I'm going to pull that blade in a little bit. You see any? I think that's clean. 
So there's, oh, I don't have my headgear. That's that uh, little fracture that we had, but you know what, with the finish on there, that might not even be noticeable and it would be on the inside. We still have, you look at the thickness that we had, and there's where we're down to. Actually, we took a little more off of this side, so I can go back in and take a little more material off of this. But that should produce a nice, stable lid for a box. A little bit thicker. If I was going to do a box that size, I probably would have used 3 8 MDF, but I didn't have any at the time. But I'm going to, I'm going to make a box, and uh, we'll actually use this lid on it. There you go. If you enjoy my method of work and like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. Now, I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the icon with the plane and the chisel, it'll take you to our website, introduce you to all of our tools that we actually manufacture right here, as well as our workshops, both in person and online. Good luck.